It's a matter of historical record that Jesus of Nazareth died and his body was placed in a tomb. It's also been firmly established that after his death and burial, his tomb was found empty. Various individuals and groups saw appearances of Jesus alive, and his disciples somehow became absolutely convinced that Jesus had risen from the dead. These are the historical facts. How do you explain them? Down through history, various naturalistic explanations have been offered to explain away these facts. Let's examine the four most popular ones. First, the conspiracy theory. According to this view, the disciples faked the resurrection. They stole Jesus' body from the tomb and then lied about seeing Jesus alive, thereby perpetrating the greatest hoax of all time. However, this theory faces overwhelming objections. It's hopelessly anachronistic. It looks at the disciples' situation through the rearview mirror of Christian history instead of from the standpoint of a first-century Jew. Jews had no concept of a Messiah who would be defeated and executed by Israel's enemies, much less rise from the dead. In Jewish thinking, the resurrection of the dead was a general event that takes place only after the end of the world and has no connection at all with the Messiah. The conspiracy theory also fails to address the disciples' obvious sincerity. People don't willingly die for something they know is not true. An honest reading of the New Testament makes it clear. These people sincerely believed the message they proclaimed and were willing to die for. For these and other reasons, no scholar defends the conspiracy theory today. A second attempt to explain the facts is the apparent death theory. Jesus didn't really die. He revived in the tomb, somehow escaped, and managed to convince his disciples he was risen from the dead. This theory also faces insurmountable obstacles. First, it's medically impossible. The Roman executioners were professionals. They knew what they were doing and made sure their victims were dead before taken down. Moreover, Jesus was tortured so extensively that even if he was taken down alive, he would have died in the sealed tomb. Second, this theory is wildly implausible. Seeing a half-dead man who crawled out of the tomb, desperately in need of bandaging and medical attention, would hardly have convinced the disciples that he was gloriously risen from the dead. As a result, no New Testament historians defend this theory today. A third explanation is the displaced body theory. Perhaps Joseph of Arimathea placed Jesus' body in his tomb temporarily because it was convenient. But later, he moved the corpse to a criminal's common graveyard. So, when the disciples visited the first tomb and found it empty, they concluded that Jesus must have risen from the dead. Once again, this theory cannot make sense of the facts. Jewish laws prohibited moving a corpse after it was interred, except to the family tomb. What's more, the criminal's graveyard was located close to the place of execution, so that burial there would not have been a problem. Also, once the disciples began to proclaim Jesus' resurrection, Joseph would have corrected their mistake. So, once again, no current scholars endorse this theory. Finally, the hallucination theory. The disciples didn't really see Jesus, but just imagined that he appeared before them. They were all hallucinating. This theory also faces considerable problems. First, Jesus appeared not just one time, but many times. Not just in one place, but in different places. Not just to one person, but to different persons. Not just to individuals, but to groups of people. And not just to believers, but to unbelievers as well. There is nothing in the psychological casebooks on hallucinations comparable to these resurrection appearances. Second, 
hallucinations of Jesus would have led the disciples to believe at most that Jesus had been transported to heaven, not risen from the dead, in contradiction to their Jewish beliefs. Moreover, in the ancient world, visions of the deceased were not evidence that the person was alive, but evidence that he was dead and had moved on to the afterworld. Finally, this theory doesn't even attempt to explain the empty tomb. Thus, the four most popular naturalistic theories fail to explain the historical facts. Where does that leave us? Another possibility is the explanation given by the original eyewitnesses that God raised Jesus from the dead. Unlike the other theories, this makes perfect sense of the empty tomb, the appearances of Jesus alive, and the disciples' willingness to die for their belief. But is this explanation plausible? After all, it requires a miracle, a supernatural act of God. Think about it. If it's even possible that God exists, then miracles are possible, and this explanation cannot be ruled out. And surely it's possible that God exists. So how do you explain the resurrection?